You are about to listen to an episode of Dolphin Financial Radio. Each week, co-hosts Dan and Tony will explore topics about finance and retirement. It's fun, informative, and most of all, useful to those who are interested in retiring successfully. Now, let's begin the show. What is an IPO or an initial public offering? This is when a private company goes public. In today's show, we're going to talk about investing in these things. Are they worth all the hype that you hear? Should you be thinking about investing in an initial public offering? What does it take? Good and bad. And Tony's going to join me and talk about the latest IPOs and how much money he made by investing in them. Wait, I made money on an IPO? (laughs) That would be awesome. Uh, Actually, hopefully everybody who has invested in IPOs made some money uh, this year when it went back up and set records, right, Dan? We'll find out. (laughs) Okay. All right. Uh, Hey, thanks for having me on the show. First of all, great to be here with you. Uh, How have you been? Pretty good. Um, I've been busy with the end of the year stuff, doing all the planning for the next year. A lot of my clients like to review what the plan is for the next year, make some tweaks. But I have noticed a lot of chatter lately in the investment space because the market is crazy, right? It's always crazy. Yeah. But have you seen these IPOs? Have you seen the hype about them? Um, No, I I honestly, I'll have to be honest with you, Dan. I haven't been paying much attention. I've been busy lately and I've been kind of, I just heard, oh, the market hit record highs and you know, I leave it up to you, our financial planner, to take care of these things and worry about these things. Well, isn't that good? So as soon as you hear about them, then I know we've peaked. So we've yeah. still got some time. Okay. We've got some yeah. time. Yeah. So what's <laughs> going on out me, there? What What is well, the buzz? There's been some recent big name IPOs. So, um, you know, bef- before I get into um, the details on it, just these are some of the names that might trigger a response. We got Airbnb recently. Oh yeah. Door DoorDash. We had Palantir. That was a, a biggie for the uh, younger crowd. And then Uber and Lyft, they went public last year. Do you remember those? Oh yeah. I remember that. Yeah. <laughs> so um when the market is doing well, you'll see more and more IPOs. And what that means is companies that are private want to go public. They want to be able to sell their shares to the general public. Because it gives them an influx of cash and, right? Yes, it totally does. And so people get caught up in this and say, remember when Facebook went IPO? Oh, yeah. What was that in 2015? Everyone's like, I got to buy it. You know, people want these companies and they think, oh, I'm going to get in on the IPO. And there's been so many. You, you wouldn't, you know, you wouldn't guess how many IPOs there's been, let's say in the past six months, I would say at least a hundred IPOs. Wow. So probably a lot more than that. But basically what happens is these private companies that you, you might know about them, like you knew about Airbnb, you knew that yep. that company yeah. existed, yeah. but if you wanted to buy Airbnb stock, you couldn't do it unless you were an employee owner or part of an investment banking group or a private investor sure. that had access to it. Right. Right. So what they do is they say, all right, now I'm going to become listed on a stock exchange where everyone can buy it. Mm-hmm. And that's when you hear the term IPO is the initial public offering to the public. So, um, let's break it down a little bit, Tony initial. Well, what's the initial? Who Whose initial offering? Because uh, it's, it's certainly not the first, right? Well, yeah. It, it isn't that when uh, they uh, go down to the stock exchange and they have that mm-hmm. little balcony that they're standing on over the <laughs> right. over the stock floor in Wall Street, and the CEO and the you know the owner and the CEO are there, and they're all excited and they bang the gavel or whatever at the opening right. bell, the bell because ding, they're. Ding, ding, ding. Because right, their right. stock is being offered for the first time to the public, right? right? It's so it's such an insider's club, isn't it? Yeah, it's like that balcony. I feel like the <laughs> the the Queen of England waving. Oh yeah, it's Ooh, crazy. Right. Yeah, it's crazy. <laughs> but so you have to be in there. But let's think about it. So 
let's take uh, Airbnb. I don't, you know, and by the way, we're going to be talking about these IPOs and I'm going to be talking about investing in them. But again, this is, this show is for informational purposes. I'm not giving investment advice here. Um, this is generally speaking because a lot of my clients ask about these things mm -hmm. and uh, they want to know what it is. So I, I kind of want to talk about it at a high level. But remember, these companies exist already. So Airbnb exists already. They have a business model. I don't know if they're making money or losing money, but now they want to go public. And so a lot of people say, oh, now they're going to raise money and they're going to become public and they're going to be a company that's ex it's exciting, it's new. But no, they're not. They're not new. There's right. been a ton of rounds of investing already. Who yeah. knows how many rounds? Right. You're not getting in on the ground floor of Airbnb. Right. This this isn't Shark Tank, right? You ever watch that show? Oh, yeah. Shark Tank? Oh, yeah. Yeah. I love that show. I love the that show, too. The kids love it, too. too. Yeah. Right? So it's, it's not Those like... Those guys can be ruthless and brutal to people. Right. They've made, they make people cry. <laughs> you Who's your favorite, uh, if you had to pick one? Oh, I don't let, know. Let me guess. You like Robert Kavork, uh, what, what's his name? The Kragovich or whatever his name is? No. He's the nice one. He's the nice Canadian guy. You're, that's, oh, that's yeah. Your the bald guy is really rude, I thought. Mr. Wonderful? Yeah. Oh, yeah, Mr. Wonderful. <laughs> I love him. He's the only yeah. one that speaks the truth. No, I don't like him. He's too, yeah, he's too mean. But you're not, if you're investing in an IPO, you're not Mark Cuban getting in on Airbnb right. at the ground level, yeah. right? You're not going to turn your you know, $100,000 investment to a billion dollars just because you got in early. You're getting in late to the game. Sure. Right? Um, there's been millions invested already through private investors, and they do it through private placements, private deals. And unless you're some sort of accredited investor that's in this space, you're not getting in early. You're Unless you're an angel investor, as they call them, or an owner, employee, you're just not getting in on the initial price. Right. Even though it's called an initial public offering, the key word here is public. Right. Not the private. Yeah. So what is the real price? Let's let's talk about this because Airbnb is I'm I'm picking on them because they're the most recent. They set the IPO price at roughly I think it was $68. Mm -hmm. So if you go online and type in the ticker symbol for Airbnb, which is A-N-B-N. Um, and you're the average Joe. You're like me and you, Tony. You type it in, you look it up, and you'll see, oh my goodness, it's up $76 that first day, 112%. I wish I would have gotten in on the IPO at 68. I Why wouldn't I do it? It's up 100%. We had DoorDash a couple of days before that yep. up, you know, 100% or whatever it was. It's ridiculous, right? So yep. people are like, oh, my God, I missed out. I missed mm -hmm. out on the deal of the century. I wish I would have taken my whole 401k, put it in there and doubled it, right? I don't even need 112%. 50% is yeah. good enough for me, yeah. right? But it doesn't work that way. It doesn't work that way. The, the opening public price on Airbnb was roughly 146. Uh -huh. So so when you look at the you look at the charts and you look at the you know Yahoo Finance or Bloomberg ticker and you see up 112%, you're not up 112%. The public's not up 112%. It's up 112% from the IPO price which was set by the bankers, by the investment bankers that brought it to you. So the first trade, the first public trade, I think, was like $146 on Airbnb. So what's this 68 price? What What is that? How do I get that? You know? So you're saying you do don't I... get that low initial price? No, no. Unless mm. you were in before it sure. went public on the exchange. Mm. So what happens is the big investors, we're talking the big institutional investors or the the big clients at the brokerage firms, they're the ones that get a shot at that initial public offering price pre-market. And they only get a small amount. Retail investors is what we call the and, average. And guys like you, you and Dan, because you're in the know. I mean, that's... <laughs> right. Sir. You get those prices. I'm in the you know. You get those prices no. because yeah, I get you're, Dan, you're I get... Dan Wendell. 
I get nothing and like it. I'm in line with you at the bread basket. No, you know, not, just, not anymore. Not with uh, an, your upcoming bestseller. It's going to be oh, a bestseller. That's true. That's, that's true. That's true. Maybe I'll go public with the spending window. The spending and, uh, I'll window. Let you, I'll let you in on the IPO on that one. Tony. Okay. But, but in reality, you know, the retail investors are not getting in. And if they do get in because they have a big uh, relationship with a brokerage firm, they have a lot of money, they, all, they won't get a huge amount of shares. Actually, if you do, if you do get offered a huge amount of shares, then you're worried. Yeah. Wait a second. Yeah, why, am, why am I <laughs> getting, uh, you know, that's a big red flag. That's like yeah. alarm bells going off. Wait, I can get in at this price? Yeah. yeah you go. Come on in. That's usually when the stock tanks at, at when it opens on the public market. Yeah. So the original investors, the owners, the big bankers, et cetera, those are the ones that get the IPO price of 68 in this case. But not even that, Tony. They're in way before that. They're the, the Shark Tank people, the owners. They, they probably, and I don't know this. This will come out soon. But the Airbnb original f- investors probably own it at ten dollars a share or something like that. Sure. Right. I don't know what they own it at. I don't care what they own it at because I can't get it. Yeah. I can't yeah. get in on that. Right. So I'm not going to lose my. I'm not going to lose sleep over the fact that oh my gosh, I wish I would have bought the IPO at sixty eight on Airbnb. It's at one hundred and fifty. I wish I would no because you couldn't get it there. Yeah, you get it like everyone else through investing at the whatever the price is trading at. So that's a big misnomer. That's a big misunderstanding of people when they look at that and say, "Oh my goodness, is up a hundred percent the first day? How come I didn't buy it? Why didn't my broker tell me about it?" Well, odds are you didn't have access to it, right? Unless yeah. you're a bigwig, and and your broker probably didn't either. No, you're right. The broker probably didn't either because if they do, they get a very select few here. We're giving, you know, here's a couple shares of this IPO and then they call their big clients and say, I'll give you one or two. You know, that's how it works. Yeah. And they're not getting in on the original price, which could be really low. Yeah. That's so. So what's happened, right? So there's a ton of hype and I'm going to get to this. What the original owners, the original investors, they're using this IPO as a liquidity event. Yeah. Meaning giving them a chance to get out. Exactly. Yeah. But there's a time lag to that, and I'll get to that in a moment. Mm-hmm. So let's talk about the hype, right? Because yeah. that's what this really is. Yep. There's a ton of hype around these IPOs. What do you know about DoorDash, Tony? Have you heard of this one? Uh, well, yeah. I'm. I mean, uh, I know. I know about DoorDash. I don't know what happened with their IPO. Um, I know that they are hugely popular because of COVID. Yes. Right. So this is a door, door to door delivery service yeah. for food. Now, I don't really know what happened with the IPO either. I'm going to look right now. I'm going online. Yeah, I don't know what happened with it, but I know it was the, the ticker, popular. The ticker is Dash, D-A-S-H, and um, it looks like they they priced the IPO at around 100, say, and it opened the first day of trading. The first trade was like 187. Oh. Boom. 87% yeah. first day. Oh my God, I wish I would have bought it. Well, yeah. it's trading below that now. So if you did buy it at the first possible time, you're probably going to lose money. If you reflect back to Facebook, Facebook IPO'd in 2015, 2015 I think it yeah. was. I think so. And it dropped from its public IPO price. I believe at one point it was down 50% from the day it opened. So all the people that got in that day one were down 50% at one point. Yep. Does that make it a bad investment? No, because it's up three to four times that now. Yeah. Right. Yeah. <laughs> right? Yeah. So once Facebook but figured out how to monetize. <laughs> right. Or once all the, all the investors and the insiders got out, drove the price down, people started to see behind the curtain then it b- popped up because it was a legit company. But if you got caught up in that hype at IPO, yep. you would have lost out if you sold, you know. Yeah. So maybe the lesson here is you watch, you wait, you learn. Because what happens when the company goes public, Tony, let's look at it from a, just a, a numbers point of view. Let's say everyone's buying at the public price. Okay. So 
you, you, the way you value a company in a very simplistic way is you multiply the number of shares that are outstanding times the price of the shares. That gives you what's known as the market capitalization, or a lot of people just say market cap. Are you awake? Yeah. You fell asleep already? No. I didn't even get to, I'm, through the I'm, first I'm point looking right asleep. at you. <laughs> I'm here. <laughs> I'm, I'm all right. soaking so, it all in. Okay, market so cap. So market cap, yep. right? So let's say the original IPO price for Airbnb was $68, and that put the market cap at $40 billion. I'm, I'm just making up yep. numbers here, but let's say it was at $40 billion. Now- as soon as it opens up to the general public, like you and me, and we're like, I want in an Airbnb. I love their service. Yep. I use it. Um, I buying it at $146, right? Now the market cap is immediately over $80 billion. So in less than a few hours, it goes from a market cap of $40 billion to $80 billion. Just like that. Boom. Mm. But what really happened? What, what has changed with the company? Nothing. Nothing, right? right? It's public now. Yeah. So, so where do we go from here? They just got so a, now, They got an influx of investor money. They certainly did, right? Yep. So now they have more money to do stuff with, and that's why the prices are high because people are saying, "Oh, the growth, the growth, yeah. the expected growth." Yeah. But if you follow just investment theory and just in market theory, the price is built into all public information. Well, just so happens now we have a whole bunch of more public information yep. because how is that price set? How is that $68 set? Who set that price? The bankers did. Yeah. The people that are bringing it public. The investment they have to put bankers. put some sort of price. Yeah. Right. So they have information that the public doesn't have. Oh, yeah. Right? So now all of a sudden we have huge growth and it's priced in. Mm. So where's the upside? Now we just doubled the market cap. Where's the upside? Where do we go from here? So that's where the trouble lies yeah. is that now, though, now that it's public, the companies can start analyzing the stock. The curtains are open. Public information by law starts coming in. They have earnings calls. They have to share all their, their numbers. A private company like Publix, Publix is a private company. What's their stock price? What are they? What do their numbers look like? What's their quarterly earnings? We don't know. Nope. They don't have to disclose that. They're a private company, right? But once you go public, it's all open. Yeah. Then you, you have, have to. a few. Then you then, right. I have a few friends that actually are involved in this, and they took companies public, and they're going to do it again. Their big complaint is now the curtains open. <laughs> Everyone could see everything, and now they have to perform because if they don't, they can get fired by investors. <laughs> right. <laughs> right? Yep. You know? yep. So the board of directors is one thing, but now when you go public, everyone's looking. Everybody. There's no hiding. Yep. They, I heard a term which I didn't like, What's but that? I guess it's the term. It's called opening the kimono. <laughs> what? Wait, what? <laughs> right. That's that a, sounds hey, Tony, a little is, risque want, um, there, buddy. I'm I'm bringing you into the little the backstage here. You got to go with it. Don't what don't internet website were you someone. on where you read that term, Dan? <laughs> Opening this the, is the lingo that these big high you know high flyers use, Tom. I, I haven't heard the, that, but I, again, I don't get Cinemax, so I don't I don't I don't hear these things. <laughs> Open the kimono, yeah. So when someone <laughs> says that, don't bat an eye. Just be like, yep, I know that. I've been there before. Been there, done that. This way, you won't look like a noob as they call them. A noob. <laughs> so this is why you see the prices increase and decrease drastically sure. during after IPOs because public information is coming out, more and more investors are coming in, and so that's why you saw Facebook drop 50%. Now, I want to go back to the insiders before we wrap this up because this is an important point to note Ooh, as the well. Insiders. One of the insiders, this sounds good. Yeah, right. Why you, you may be reticent to invest in an IPO because... Remember, I said this is often used as a liquidity event for the insiders, mm -hmm. the original investors. So when a uh, IPO price is launched um, and the market starts buying, there's usually a blackout period for the original investors, the people that bring it to market at that original price. So they can't just uh, automatically start selling. That's right. So in the case of Airbnb, uh, I'm, I'm, I don't know the exact IPO price. I think it was 68, mm -hmm. but it opened at 140, whatever the 68 price people 
those that got in, they're not allowed typically to sell for three, six months usually, right? So they have a decision to make later. Will they cash out? So they're excited right now. They're like, oh my God, I'm up double. I'm up 150%. Sure. They're the real ones that say I'm up 150%. Yeah. yeah. Right? But they they can't sell yet. They have a waiting period. And they can't so buy let's say either. They can't buy either. They're completely right, blacked so out. Yeah. They're blacked out. So they are sitting there saying, all right, I got six months. What do I do? And six months comes up and then they have to make a decision. Do they start selling? And you'll see people sell. A lot of people sell at that point, you know, especially the investors that weren't necessarily owners that aren't in the day to day. They're like, let me out. You know, this is my chance. And they'll push the price down at that point. You got to, the price is based on supply and demand, right? There's a limited number of shares with a whole bunch of people that are on the inside are selling. They don't care if it drops 10 points because they're already up. 100%, right? They'll get out. They're getting out now. So, so that would drive decide, the price down, is what you're saying. That's right. So you might see a little blip at six months or three months, depending on whether or not the inside so is what, selling. So where I see you going with this, uh, what, uh, is your point in all this that you shouldn't buy right away at an, uh, in an IPO when it is initially offered? You should wait a little bit, and then uh, well, if you see it drop, then buy? Well, that's it. So I'm again. I'm not giving investment advice, right. but I'm saying in general, um, I uh, like to avoid hype. I like to avoid volatility. Yeah. And if you give the pro the stock some time to settle out, you give the insiders time to s to settle out because they're gonna they're gonna have to decide in three months or six months. Do they believe in the hype at that point, and will they sell? But yeah, I agree. I think. You're on the right point there, Tony. I would beware of the hype. IPOs sound cool. Yeah. Isn't it cool? But unless you're an insider, which most people aren't, mm -hmm. you're not getting the real IPO right, price. Right. So, you know, you're getting the first price that everyone can get access to, that your mom can get access to. <laughs> so I'm a conservative investor uh, and I'm a conservative advisor. So what I do with my own money is, is different than a lot of my clients because they're older and they're in different spots. So I'm, I don't have access to IPOs, Tony. I'm 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 sorry to say. I know you thought I did, but I just don't have that buying power. <laughs> My clients can invest in an IPO and trade on the side if they wish, but I'm not buying into IPOs. Um, my clients um, do have fun money. Some of them say, "Oh, I like to invest," and I'll let them do that. But for the average pre-retiree or retiree, it's probably best to avoid the hype and focus on the bigger picture and not get caught up in this IPO nonsense. And I'm calling it nonsense in not that it's bad, not that these things are bad. It's just the hype around them can get overwhelming. Right. And when it comes to investments, uh, again, you say you want to avoid giving specific investment advice over the show because it really comes down to everybody's individual situation. Every person's situation is different and an investment that might be right for them might not be right for uh, another listener or client that you have. Right. And, but the IPOs work the same, you know, and unless you're on the inside, you're going to get caught up in hype usually. But then yeah. again, I said, Tony, everyone's different. You might be really in tune with an IPO of a company that no one's heard of. Like I said, there's been a probably at least a hundred in the past four months companies that went public yeah. that you don't, that you probably didn't hear about. But if you're involved with it, if you know people, if you got, you know, then you might buy into it. But the, the big ones like, uh, you know, Lyft and Uber, uh, from last year, yeah. if you think about those, um, the, everyone knew what Uber was. Mm -hmm. Um, I don't even know what the umlaut is though. Is it, is the Uber, the Uber has an umlaut in it, doesn't it? Um, I don't think so. Uh, on the U or the E? No. There's some sort of fancy is little there, symbol does it have on an there. Uma? I don't think it does, honestly. <laughs> but all I know is that Uber was a big hype and a lot of people bought into it. Uh, but then COVID hit and COVID actually like Lyft and Uber uh, took a hit because people aren't Ubering around to different places during COVID. However, Uber was smart. They immediately uh, started promoting Uber Eats. 
So, mm-hmm. you know, they they said, hey, drivers, you're not picking up people to take them from bar to bar. You know, like that's Uber's big business. That's one of their main businesses is when people go out to parties or to drink, they don't want to drive. So they get an Uber, especially in big cities. Well, hey, uh, that's not happening. So what they did is started Uber Eats and started delivering, say, to told their drivers, deliver food, go to McDonald's, pick up, you know, a happy meal and deliver it to this address. And so right. they kept busy. I don't know what Lyft's doing, but all I know is that's a tough business to be in right now. I guess people still need rides once in a while to the airport, but that business has to be down. COVID really affected a lot of those new IPOs that launched last year. Well, and that's just it. We we can't we can't invest thinking of the COVID thing because that's no. just an outlier. Right. But if you look at it, if you look, let's look at Uber just as an example. Mm-hmm. In it, it went IPO in May of 2019. So I'm looking at a chart. It was in the high 30s. We'll say 37 to 40, and it got up to looks like. $44 in July of last year, but then it went down, went down to like $26 and then it popped up again to 35. So again, oh. back to where the initial sure. public got in, but then COVID happened. And at one point I'm looking, it got to about 15 bucks. Wow. All right. Now it's at like 53 or something like that. Mm. So it's up, but, and it's got a market cap of 95 billion. Right. So but back in February or March of 2020, it was at 15 bucks. So the market cap was probably, you know, 20, 30 billion or something like that. So what I'm saying is, if you look at if you bought that hype at the IPO and you would and you bought right away and just held, you'd be okay. But you would have really gone through some turmoil even before COVID. Yeah. You you were down, you know, 20, 30 percent or more. Interesting. So and you hear about that happening with a lot of IPOs. Right. And, you know, Facebook, like I said, went down 50 percent from its IPO and then now it's up big. So what you do is and there's so many companies to invest in, Tony, so many that I'm trying to say, don't get caught up in the hype of the IPOs just for the sake of the IPOs. Why don't you look at some IPOs that happened last year or a couple of years ago or 20 years ago and see, is that company stable? What is that company's prospects? What are they going to do? And you could find winners without the volatility. Mm. There you go. Good point. Yeah, that's a good, I've never heard it explained that way. And once again, Dan, that's why you look at things from a different angle. Uh, That's why I love doing the show with you and working with you. Uh, That's really smart. I, I never honestly thought about that. Um, there you go. Yeah. And a lot of people think that, oh, I should get in on this IPO right away because then it's going to grow. And sometimes that can work. But a lot of times, like you say, it, it doesn't. So you have to be careful. Well, Dan, we should probably wrap things up. Why don't you let our listeners know how they can get a hold of you? And you got a lot to talk about. You got a new book. Uh, you're mm-hmm. offering complimentary consultations. You got a lot to offer our listeners out there. Yeah. Um, best way to get in touch with me, go to dolphinfinancialgroup.com. Uh, I'll probably put a little note up on that website about the new book, which is called The Spending Window. That is uh, the, called, uh, that's the, the book is called Spending Window. The website is spendingwindow.com. You can get that. If you want a free copy, give me a call. The best number, 888-508-5935. If you want to talk stocks, picking stocks, I'm probably not the best one to do that because I shoot down a lot of crazy ideas. But I do a lot of investing for clients. I come up with portfolios that are more stable, less uh, less risky, and that's usually the way to win in the end, especially when you're getting close to retirement. That number again, 888-508-5935 or go to dolphinfinancialgroup.com. Tony, thanks for being here today and not investing in IPOs. <laughs> and Because uh, if you did, you would have made money and you would have said, Dan, you're a fool. Yeah. But <laughs> no, <laughs> you played a part well. Yeah, well, great. <laughs> Yeah. Well, I play the fool well uh, as the sidekick, that's for sure, making you look even smarter. But great show today, Dan. I had a blast. A great topic. And listeners, that does it for today's episode of Dolphin Financial Radio with our host, Dan Wendell. The topics on this show are wide ranging, yet relevant to people approaching or living in retirement like me. If there is a topic you want to hear on the show, head to dolphinfinancialgroup.com and contact Dan 
to request your topic or to share your opinion. Dan Mundell or Dolphin Financial Group are not affiliated or endorsed by Social Security or any government agency. Everything discussed on today's show was for informational purpose only. Since everyone's situation is different, some things may not apply to you. The materials presented are believed to be from reliable sources. We cannot be 100% certain that they are accurate. You should really talk to my dad or someone from Dolphin Financial Group before trying to implement these ideas or strategies.